Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Mode Bespoke and I'm Atenas. And for today's project, we're going to crochet this Mr. and Mrs. Afghan. So it is quite an easy project to crochet. You will, however, require the chart and you're going to require uh, quite a bit of materials. So I've left all the information on the blog. So check out the blog. The link is in the description box below to get the full list of materials as well as your copy of the chart. So let's get started. So before we get started, there are several things we need to go over before you can begin with this project. Starting with the size. This is a large blanket. It is intended as a wedding gift and it's a couple's blanket. So it is 58 and a half inches by 66 and a half inches. So it is quite large. You will need to use the chart. So I mentioned it in the intro, but you really will need the chart. Um, you can find this on the blog. There is just a small photo of it, but I do recommend that you buy the full page version. So you will see the uh, buy option on the blog and it says purchase your PDF pattern. It does come with three different PDFs. So two of them are charts and one of them is the written instructions. So that way you have an idea how to put together your chart and your blanket. So you will get a small chart, which is a one page chart, which is the same size as this one that you see here. So it's the full page. You also get a second chart, which is a four page. So it's one page and then two, three, and then four. You will have to print all four pages. And when you print them, just fold the little margin because I can't really get rid of this margin. So just fold it in half or fold it along the line, sorry, not in half, and just tape your pages together to create one large chart. And that's for folks that have trouble seeing these numbers. They're really not that small, um, but if you want a bigger chart, I recommend you print the large version. But that's all I'm gonna tell you here about the chart. Um, so go to the blog, check it out, purchase yours if you'd like. I do email them, so give me just a few moments to email you. I do live in Eastern US uh, time, so if you email me during the day, just give me like 10 minutes, I'll email you back. If you email me sometime at night or you're in a different country like the UK or Australia or somewhere, you probably won't get your chart until the next day. All right, so for starters, this blanket, the chart itself, so let me open this. So this whole section is 100 stitches by 100 rows. So the blanket, we start with 180 stitches and it's about 186 rows up. So you are gonna have a nice border around this chart area. So you're gonna have 34 rows at the top and the bottom, and then 40 stitches on either side of your chart. So let's take a look at our blanket here. So to start, we're gonna need to chain 180 stitches. We're gonna work the entire project in half double crochets. I will go over how to do all of this in just a moment, but let's talk about putting this thing together. So you've made your chain 180 and you're gonna make 34 rows of half double crochets. So just 34 in color one, which is the mint. So I use this mint color, 34 rows. And then you introduce your chart. This is gonna be around row 35. So row 35, we're gonna start crocheting all of this fun stuff. And as you can tell, it's quite large. So see, it's much bigger than the picture here. So we're gonna start row 35 crocheting all of the chart items. And then you're gonna add 30 rows above the chart space. So once you've crocheted the design, you do 34 more rows on top, and then you can start working on the rest of your border. So there are a few more things that we need to go over on this chart before we get started. Starting with here, you're going to notice the numbers here along the side. So this is the number of rows. And when you start the chart, if you noticed, I started on row number one. And the reason I did this is because I'm trying to give you as much freedom as I can so that you can make the blanket whatever size you want. You are limited to 100 stitches across. So that's the minimum you can make. The, the minimum size as far as small that you can make this blanket 
and then 100 rows up because this design takes up 100 stitches by 100 rows. So that's as small as you can make the blanket. However, you can make it much larger by adding rows and stitches along the sides and creating a greater border around the design itself. So that's why this little, the first stitch is row one, stitch one, instead of row 35, stitch, what would it be, 39 or whatever. So we'll look into that a little bit further. So the numbers that run along the sides of your chart, so these right here, that is the number of rows. So you have rows one through 100. The numbers along the bottom and the top part of your chart are the number of stitches, also one through 100. So when you read the chart, all your odd numbered rows, so one, three, five, seven, all of those, you're gonna read them from right to left. So just follow along the, the stitch numbers on, along the bottom and you'll be able to keep count. Now, when you're working on even numbered rows, you're gonna work from left to right. So that's why you're gonna use the numbers. You won't use the numbers along the bottom of the chart. You're gonna to need to use the numbers along the top. So these numbers along the top, I've listed them from left, so one is on this side, to right, and 100 is on the right, so that you have at least one, um, one row of numbers that you can follow and you still know what stitch you are on. So read the top numbers when you're going on, when you're working on your even numbered rows, and use the bottom numbers when you're using your odd numbered rows. So just become familiar with your chart before you get started. Another important thing that you'll need to know, so there are a couple of different numbers that I'm going to talk to you about here on the chart, some that you're gonna write in yourself, but the first ones we need to look at are the ones that are listed below some of the images and some of the letters. So if you look here, you're gonna see a small number 44 and then on the M a 44 and on the period of 44. That's because they start on row 44 and it's easier to just look at it than to have to just hold your finger and go all the way across the row because then you can lose what row you're on. So I've just listed the row number in which that stitch starts at the bottom of every image. So you see it on the M's, you'll see it on the ring, see there's a little number right in here. These I've also numbered in the center. So that's what those numbers mean. Now you're gonna notice that I've penciled in these numbers in between. I didn't write these into the uh, chart itself just to keep things from being too confusing. So I'm gonna give these numbers to you now. These numbers are the number of stitches between the different sections. So in the bow tie, between this side, or this end of the bow tie and this other end, there's a total of 16 stitches in between all of that. So that's just to help you. You can also count these yourself if you want. So write the 16 down if you want to. Between both sides of the M, you have 12. So it's 12 stitches right in between the M. The same goes for the other M. Now in between the R and the S, there are six stitches. Now if you look at the ring, between this diagonal and where the ring starts, that's a total of 12 stitches. So there's 12 on this side. I believe there are 11 on the other side, but you're gonna be starting on an even numbered row because I think this is row 66. So you're gonna need to know the number of stitches from left to right, so it's 12. On the bottom part of the ring, you have seven stitches, and on the wide part of the ring, on the inside, it's 15 stitches. So let's go over them again quickly. So you have 16 stitches, 12 stitches in the M, six stitches between the R and the S, that's six, that's 12 between the diagonal and the ring, right there, 12. The bottom part of the ring is seven. In the widest part of the ring, it's 15. So jot those down. They will really help you just save some time. Um, and then there's also uh, a number which I completely forgot to write down. But the space that goes right here between the bow tie and the diagonal on the left side, it is an even row where you're going to start the bow tie so you're going to work from left to right and there is a total of 25 stitches so see it's row 14 you're going to go left to right and there are 25 stitches between the diagonal and your bow tie so write that down as well so let's grab our chart let's move everything over 
And then let's kind of go over how to put this together again, just to try to explain everything as easily as I can. So you've already made your chain of 180 stitches. You've made 34 rows, and now you're ready for your chart, because you're gonna be working on row 35. So for row 35 is equivalent to the first stitch of your chart. So you're going to you're going to work this chart from the bottom towards the top. So you're going to start on row 1, stitch 1 when you're on row 35. Remember that you need 40 stitches before you go into the chart because we had we started with 180 stitches. The chart's only 100. So you need to complete 40 stitches and then we'll go to these. So then you have 41, 42, 43 until you get to your color switch. Same goes on this other side. Complete your chart, and then when you finish your last stitch, so stitch 100, you're gonna crochet 40 additional stitches to finish the row. It'll be really obvious. So once you finish your chart, you're gonna have a bunch of chain space left. Just complete that in half double crochets in mint or whatever color you used as color number one for the background. So what your blanket is gonna look like is like this. You're gonna have a border down here, your chart, border, and you're gonna have 40 stitch border on either side of your blanket. So it'll be a nice, even little border. This is explained also in the written pattern, so don't worry, it's explained on there with a little chart and everything. And then we're gonna do, at the very end of it all, you can add whatever border you want. I chose white so that it helps all of my, like the words of the Mr. and Mrs. and everything pop out, since I used white for all of the images. You can use whatever color you want for your border. We'll talk a little bit more about the border at the end of the video. So if you've already checked out the blog, you're going to know that you need two different colored yarns. If you haven't yet, here it is. You need two different colored yarns. So you need more yarn if of the color that you're going to use as the background. So I used six skeins of Red Heart Super Saver, and it's just the regular skein. I think it was 334 um, yards or something like that. It's written on the on the pattern on the blog, um, but it was like 334 yards per skein. I needed six of those. And then I used two skeins in white or of white, and that's because I also made my border in white. So you're going to need a total of eight skeins to complete this pattern, but more on that on the blog. So let's get started here. We're going to start with the blue, which is the color I chose to use. Um, it just is a lot more visible on camera. So I'm going to use blue instead of mint. And we're going to start our chain with a slip knot. So wrap the yarn around two fingers. So I'm just going to hold it down with my thumb, wrap it around two fingers, and then I'm going to insert my hook into the loop I've made. And then you're going to pull up another loop of yarn. So just grab it with your hook and pull it through that ring you made. And now hold down your yarn with your index finger, and then you can just pull out the fingers on your left hand. And you just tighten your knot by pulling on these two little threads below your knot. And there's a slip knot. So tighten that up, so just pull on the threads down here, and let's get started. To make a chain, you're going to yarn over, so loop the yarn around your hook, and pull that loop through the stitch you had on your on your hook already like so so that's one so yarn over and pull through this bottom loop for two yarn over and you're going to pull through this little bottom loop for three let's do one more yarn over and pull through the loop for four so that is how you make a chain you're going to need to chain 180 stitches if you're going to make a blanket the same size as the one I made um, in the photos. So I'm just going to keep crocheting 180 stitches, or this is a small sample, so I'm going to do a few. But crochet your chain, pause the video, I'll see you again here in just a moment. Alright, so once you've already chained 180 stitches, we have to start with our foundation row. So it's gonna be our very first row. And we're gonna to need to start with a chain one. So yarn over and pull through the loop. And now you're gonna start in the second stitch of the row. 
Sew the second stitch from your hook. So skip this stitch you just made, this little chain. So this right here, skip that first stitch and go to the second stitch on your, from your hook. So this one, that's where you're gonna make your very first half double crochet, right there. To make your half double crochet, you're gonna yarn over. It's easier if you just hold your yarn down with your index finger. So yarn over and you're gonna insert your hook into the second stitch from your hook, like so. And then you yarn over and you're gonna pull your hook out. You'll have three loops on your hook. You're gonna to need to yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that is a half double crochet. So let's do that a few more times. So you need to start with a yarn over Insert your hook into the stitch that is next to the one you just did. So stitch number three. So insert your hook, yarn over, and pull your hook out. And then you have three loops. And then you're gonna yarn over and pull that through all three loops. Let's do it one last time. So you're gonna yarn over Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull your hook out, here are your three loops, now you're going to yarn over and pull through all three. And that's how you make a half double crochet. You're going to need to work a half double crochet into every stitch of your row. So keep making one for every stitch of your chain and then you're gonna, this is the same stitch that you're gonna work with for the entire blanket. So practice it a little bit if you've never done this before. If you're familiar with this stitch, then you should have no problem completing the rest of the project. It's gonna be super simple. So I'll just keep crocheting um, a half double crochet into every stitch of my row. I'll see you again here in just a minute. So here's my last stitch of the row. I'll just make my half double crochet and finish the row. And there we go. So this is what our first row looks like. So now let's get moving on to row number two. All of your rows, you're going to begin with a chain two. It's gonna be a little bit different once you introduce a second color, but it's always gonna be a chain two. And now you're gonna turn your work around. So we're gonna start half double crochets in every stitch of the row. So this is why odd number rows, you work, you read your chart from right to left, and then on even rows, since you have to turn your work around, you read them from left to right. So in case anyone was wondering that, that's why you read it that way. Because after every row, when you start a new row, you have to turn your work around and work in the other direction. All right, so let's go into row number two. So here's your first stitch. So this is not the stitch, so this is just a little end. Your first stitch is really visible. You're gonna start your first half double crochet in that first stitch. And then you're just gonna make a half double crochet in every stitch of the row. So for all of my experienced crocheters, just keep working this way. You're gonna make 35, or 34 rows of this, sorry. 34 rows of half double crochets. We're now on row number two. For those that are not experienced and not quite sure what you're looking at, this is what our rows look like. So you're gonna see that there's a stitch in here. So it's got two sides of the stitch. It's got the bottom part, and then it's got a little top part. So here's the top part, and then there's a little hole in there. So that space in there, that is your stitch. So that's where you're gonna insert your hook. So it's got this top loop and then a bottom loop. And then if you turn it towards the side, you'll also see a stitch here at the top. So it's that little V. So that is where you insert your hook to make your half double crochets. So just keep making a half double crochet in every stitch of the row until you get to the end of the row. So if you need to see how to do a half double crochet, just go back on the video a little bit where I explained it um, step by step. So while I'm working along here, I'm going to show you, we've got two rows already made. So I'm working on the second row, and this is for all of my new crocheters. You will need 
to crochet an additional 32 rows. So count your rows. Everyone who's experienced probably already knows this, but for all of my newbies, you are now on row number two. So this is the last stitch of row number two. We're gonna chain two. So there's one, two. Turn your work around and then crochet a half double crochet in every stitch of your row for row number three. So continue until you have a total of 34 rows. So you still need 32 more. Now we're gonna start working on row number 35. So we're just gonna pretend like we have crocheted 35 rows. So here, let me draw this out for you all to explain it a little bit easier. So work 34 rows. On row 35, you need to crochet 40 stitches. So 40 half double crochets in color one. So whether it's blue or mint or whatever color you're currently working in, you need to crochet 40 stitches. So 40 stitches and then you introduce your chart, which is only 100 stitches. So it goes in the middle. When you finish your chart, you do an additional 40 stitches on the end. And then you complete your blanket once your chart is completely done. So you've made all 100, 100 rows, you're gonna add 34 rows to the top. And then you'll do your border. So you need 40 additional stitches. So we're just gonna pretend like we're gonna start on row number 35 so that I can explain to you how to read your chart. So let me erase all of this stuff um, and then give me a moment so that we can come back and I'll show you how to do all of this, um, all of these little colored stitches, which are gonna be our white stitches. All right, so I've erased everything. Now we're pretending like we're starting on row number 35. I'm going to pretend I've already completed 40 stitches. So this is row 35, I've done 40 stitches already to the left of my work, or I'm sorry, to the right of my work. And we're gonna start here, stitch number one, row number one. So this would essentially be stitch number 41, which is gonna be the first st stitch we're gonna start with. We need 10 stitches before we change color. So here's the beginning part of the arrow. So we're gonna need to do 10, 10 stitches in blue, and then we're gonna introduce the color white to our pattern, or whatever other color you chose to use. So color number two. So we're pretending I've already done 40 stitches here on the side. And then I've already completed a couple other stitches because I'm only making a small sample. So this is, I don't know, stitch number eight, nine. And we're only completing nine. I know we need 10 stitches, but we're only completing number nine because on stitch number 10, we are introducing our new color into the works. So for stitch number 10, which would be stitch number 50 if you want to look at it that way, yarn over and insert your hook into the stitch and then yarn over and pull up a loop so that you have your three loops of the half double crochet. Now grab your second color. So just drop the blue yarn, don't cut it or anything, just drop it. Grab your second color, leave a long tail of yarn. We will weave this in later and wrap the yarn around your hook to create a loop, like so. You're gonna pass the white loop, so this one, through the three loops of your unfinished half double crochet. And now we've completed it. So you've completed stitch number 10 of the chart. And now we're gonna complete the two stitches in white, which are the two stitches that we need here stitch number 11 and stitch number 12 of row one of our chart. So we're gonna do our first half double crochet in white and then just drop the tail end of white yarn that you're not using. Just let it hang back there. We'll weave it in at the end of the project. You're gonna need to hide your blue yarn. So you're gonna have to carry the yarn. That way you have easy access to it later and so you don't end it with like a stranded crochet work blanket that'll get caught on things. So to carry yarn, you're gonna need to lay your blue yarn flat above your work. So here's all of our crochet work. You're just gonna grab your yarn and lay it on top of the stitches. So lay it above here, like so. And that's how you're gonna hold it. So when you get your white yarn, just make sure that your blue yarn is laying over the stitches you're gonna be working into. 
and let's do stitch number 11, which had to be in white. So there we go. And then stitch number 12, we're gonna have to switch color again. So make your half double crochet halfway in white. So pull up your three loops. Cause see, we only have two stitches in white or color two, which are these two little gray squares. So these right here. Now we have to finish our stitch. So grab your white yarn and lay it across in front of your work. So pull it towards you and just hold it down with your thumb. Grab your blue yarn or whatever yarn you're using as color one, yarn over and pull through all three loops to complete your half double crochet. So there you go. You have stitch number 11 and 12 in white, which is what our chart told us to do. Now we're ready to crochet in mint or blue or color one all the way to stitch number 87 because we have 88 stitches. So if you look here, we have to go to stitch number 88 before we do 89 and 90 in white or we do another color switch. So I'm going to crochet up until stitch number 87 in mint or in color one. So we're just going to keep crocheting here. And now your white yarn, you're gonna to have to carry the white yarn. So here's your white yarn. You're gonna lay it over your stitches like you did the blue yarn just a little while ago. So you lay it on top and then you're gonna crochet over that. So grab your blue yarn and you're just gonna work your half double crochets. Just make sure that your white yarn is always laying above your stitch work. So what's gonna happen is as you crochet your half double crochets, they're gonna wrap around your white yarn and it's gonna remain hidden. So you won't be able to see it. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. So while you are carrying your yarn, it's very important to pay attention to the tension you're using when you're crocheting. So don't pull on the white thread as you are crocheting around. Um, and also make sure not to leave it too loose. Here, I'll try to crochet a couple of stitches and see if I can make them loose. Because see, your yarn will bunch up in the back and it'll poke through your work. So it'll look like this. If that happens, just lightly tug on your work just to hide the yarn. So if you pull too tightly on your crochet work, it's gonna bunch it all up so that white, the white yarn that you're carrying or the blue, whichever color you're carrying, it's gonna bunch up your work. So you don't wanna pull on it too tightly. So just pay attention to, to what kind of tension you're using as you're crocheting. Just keep it nice and loose throughout the entire project. Now, moving on with the rest of our chart. So we're gonna pretend like we've made it all the way to the end and we're now on stitch 87 and 88, which is where we're gonna have to change colors so that we can make the bottom part of the arrow in white. So crochet all of these stitches until you get to stitch 87 and then join me again when you're ready to stitch, um, stitch number 88. So I'm gonna make stitch number 88. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. So we have three loops on our hook. Drop your blue yarn. Just let it go, let it fall behind your work. Grab your white yarn, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And there you go, that's stitch number 88. And now we can complete our next two stitches in white. If you pull on the blue yarn, it'll close up that stitch a little bit so you can have a, a nice and tight stitch right there. Okay, now on the white yarn, we have to complete two stitches. So one is a regular half double crochet and the second one, we're gonna have to switch colors again. So hold your blue yarn so that you're carrying it, so you're hiding it, and do your first half double, half double crochet. And then we're gonna do our second half double crochet and only do a half of the stitch. So pull up your three loops now grab your white yarn and pull it across in front of your work. Pull up your blue yarn, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. And now you're ready to crochet in blue. Now just grab your white yarn, lay it flat over your stitches, and then you can carry it. And now you just finish the rest of your row in color one. So here we go. Make sure that you are carrying your white yarn, all right? So that way it remains hidden. So I'll finish this last half double crochet and our row is finished. So there we go. 
So this is our first row carrying yarn. So this is where our chain, like the chain two at the beginning of the row, is a little bit different. So unlike the other rows where you just did chain two and then you start on a new row, with this one, you have to hide your white yarn because it'll just hang out here on the side and you won't need it for a few stitches. So in order to keep it hidden, we have to keep it aligned with the edge of the blanket. And that way when you carry it, you won't be able to see it. So if I show you here on the completed blanket, you might just see a small dot like this, just kind of poking through. And then if you, if you choose not to hide it this way, you might have a bit more of a visible stitch. So here's what I do. If you do something different, just let us know in the comments because it might be a better way. So normally what I do was when I'm carrying yarn and I have to chain, I'm just gonna hold the white yarn over. So just pull it over your blue and then chain two. And then just tighten everything a little bit, turn your work around and your yarn is ready to carry throughout the rest of the row again. So I just pulled it over the stitch and then chained two. I will show you again at the end of this next row. So if you didn't catch that, I'll show you here again. So we're gonna complete a few more rows. So I'll just do one more with you because it's just the same repetition. And then we'll go over row number 12, which is where you have to start shifting a little bit and adding more stitches. So let's do one more row together of the same stitch. So go row number two, row number four, whichever one you want. We're gonna do one more of these. And to start that, we're gonna need to crochet the 40 stitches and then plus the nine additional stitches of the chart. So it's 40 plus the nine of the chart. And then 10 is the color change. So this is gonna be what, stitch number eight? or stitch number nine perhaps. Okay, so stitch number nine, yeah, nine, and then stitch number 10, because we're pretending I've already crocheted my 40 stitches. So I'm crocheting the stuff on the chart. So with stitch number 10, you have to do your color switch. See, and now you can do stitch 11 and stitch number 12 in white. But see, since we only have the two stitches and now we have to switch color again, we're just going to do the three loops, pull your white yarn in front of your work and hold it down with your thumb, and then just close off your stitch. So there we go. See, now you completed stitch 11 and 12 in white. And now you just complete the rest of your row the way it tells you on the chart. And once you've already completed the bottom stitches or the, the bottom row of any of the images. So in this case, it's the bottom part of the arrow. The rest of this just gets really easy because you don't have to count stitches anymore. You just have to keep crocheting until you get to your color switch. So I'll keep crocheting until I have one last stitch in blue. And then I know I have to switch colors to white. So see, here's my last blue stitch before the white. So this would be stitch number 88. So I know that for stitch 89, I need to be, I need to have my white yarn ready. So I'll pull up my three loops, drop my blue yarn, grab the white yarn, pull up the loop and just uh, yarn over through all three loops. So that way I can finish my last stitch. So that was stitch 88 in blue. I'm now ready to work with my white and I can do my two white stitches. So there's one. There's two, and then I need to pull my white yarn in front of my work. I'm sorry, this is the little tail end, so ignore that one. So here's my white working yarn. Pull it in front of my work, hold it down with my thumb, and then yarn over with the blue yarn, pull that through all three loops, and then I closed my stitch. Don't forget to carry your yarn throughout this work. If you're not familiar with carrying your yarn, you might have to remind yourself every time you do a color switch, but it will get easier. You may have noticed that when you're working with the blue yarn, I normally just drop it. And then with the white yarn, when you're doing a color switch, I pull it in front. That is to help you avoid getting your yarn tangled. It's really easy to tangle your yarn when you're working with more than one color, especially when you're carrying yarn. So in order to avoid that, that's why you pick one color yarn and you're always gonna pull that in front when you do your yarn over color switch. 
and then the other one you just kind of drop it below and that way it'll keep your yarn from really tangling. So it might take you a row or two to get the hang of it, but it does get a lot easier. You will need to figure it out by the time you get to these middle rows because you're gonna be doing so many color switches that if you don't have the hang of the system yet, you're gonna, your yarn's gonna get completely tangled up. So it's just gonna get really, really twisted up, I, sh I should say, not really tangled. So that just might be a little bit of a pain um, as you're working further along. So find a system that works best for you. I'll show you what I mean with the color switch here in just a moment. Um, let me just finish this last half double crochet and then I'll show you how to do that chain two while you're carrying yarn. And then we'll do one last color switch so that I can show you what I mean by dropping yarn one way or the other. So let me get this last half double crochet. There we go. So now I'm gonna grab the white yarn and loop it over the blue. So I'll just hold it here with my right hand. Here's the blue yarn. Pull that up and chain two. Now we're gonna turn your work around. You're gonna carry the white yarn because you have a few stitches in blue to do before you have to switch color. So carry your white yarn. There we go. And I'll do the first few stitches here that I need in blue. And now when I switch yarn to, from the blue to the white, I'm just going to drop the blue yarn. So just drop it. Grab the white yarn, yarn over and pull through the loops. Now I'll do my stitch in white and then do that second stitch, but only pull up the three loops. Now the white thread, I'm going to pull it towards the front, hold it with my right hand. Now grab my blue yarn and finish the stitch. And that's it. So that's how, that's the system I use to keep my yarn from tangling up. Now, let me show you, this is that little tail end of yarn. Just ignore it, we'll weave it in later. You're gonna see it for a few more rows, but just learn to ignore it. Now, when you're carrying yarn, you won't be able to see it. So, see, we've got the white yarn, we've been carrying it through. Here's the back view, here's the front. You can't see it. If you zoom in, so let me just pull this work up here. You will be able to see the white yarn just kind of laying in there, but normally when you're holding the blanket in front of you, you can't see it at all. And after you've washed the blanket once or twice, you really won't be able to see that white yarn. All you're going to see is the design that you've crocheted in white. So that's the beauty of carrying yarn. You can just hide it throughout your work and it pops out whenever you need it to instead of having to weave in so many ends. You could, if you chose to weave in all the ends and then just do the individual project, it'll take you a lot longer. So practice carrying yarn. It will make your life so much easier. Another random helpful tip is you're going to be switching um, rows a lot. And after a while, there is a hundred rows just in the design alone. You will need an easier way of keeping track of them because they all start to look the same. So after a while, you might lose track of them. And what I do is I just draw a little dot after I've completed a row. So you can see it here on this one. I had another little chart that I also use, but I just drew little dots along the edge um, after I finished a row. Another thing you can do to help you keep track of what row you are on is just grab another sheet of paper or a post-it. A post-it is awesome for this. You just block off the rows above what you're working on and just make the row you're working on visible. That will make it so much easier when you're also on things like um, the bow tie or the ring. If you use a post-it, it makes life so much easier because you'll be able to see what row you're on and what stitch you're on. So give that a try if, if it's something that might help you. So, cause yeah, see all these stitches will all kind of just start to look the same. So now what we're going to review next is how to add a stitch on the right or the left. So it's the same idea. But we're going to start with row number 12 and I'll teach you how to add stitches on either side so that you can do the rest of the design. So like the bow tie or the letter M, the letter R, any of those that you have to do any kind of increase, if you want to call it that way, um, we have to add more of your white stitches. So I'll show you one row. And we're going to start to work here on the diagonal just to make it a little bit easier to see. So if you notice here on this row here, let's start on this side. So if you notice on row number 12, 
you have all of these little gray stitches are all, all worked in color too. Remember that you still have your 40 stitches here on the side. So you're going to start with stitch number 41 is going to start in white. So this stitch right here, that's one. So that would be stitch number 41. You start in white. So 41 all the way through stitch number here, 10, and then 11 and 12, which are, so this is one through 10, and then 11 and 12 are also worked in white. And then you have stitch number 13 also in white. So this is the same method you're gonna use for all of the diagonals when you add and subtract different stitches, okay? But look at your chart. So just look at the stitch number that you need to add. It's really quite simple if you just follow the chart. So this is where I'm telling you a post-it will make your life so much easier. So let me pull out these stitches so that we can start since I don't have enough stitches to pretend we started with stitch number 40. As you can see, I'm, on, I'm using blue yarn. So ideally for stitch number 40, you would have done a color switch so that you're ready to go with your white yarn. So right here, you would have had to have switched colors. So I'm just going to do my chain here in white just to be ready to go. So stitch, you know, 41, 42, all the way to stitch number 50 is all done in white. So I'll just complete these stitches in white. So it's all of these at the top right there. So I'll do these right here in white. And then we have stitch 11 and 12 which are these two and now we have to add one more stitch in white which would be stitch number 13 so you're just going to yarn over insert your hook pull up three loops we're going to pass this white yarn in front of our work and then yarn over and pull through all three pull through all three loops in blue and there we go we have added one more stitch in white Sorry, I don't know if you can hear the thunder, but there's some loud thunder going on here in the background. All right, so now let's go to the other side of the chart. Now you're gonna have to add a stitch to the right of your work. So the last time we added a stitch to the left, now you have to add a stitch to the right. So we have to add this stitch right over here. Now stitch 88 will no longer be in white. I'm sorry, in blue, it will now be in white. So we're just gonna keep working here until we get to that color switch. Here we go, let me zoom out. All right, so now we have two stitches. We have to add one in white, so this has to be a white stitch, which means this one has to be our color switch in order for us to have the right stitch count. So I'm going to make stitch number 87. We're gonna drop the blue, grab the white, pull through all three, and now stitch number 88 can be crocheted in white like so. We've got this stitch right here is now in white and now we can complete the rest of the row. So there's 89, 90, but I'm just gonna switch colors here one more time and just finish this row. Which I was supposed to have crocheted in white, but I didn't. So just follow your chart Here we go, let me pull my white yarn over. So remember to just loop it over your blue yarn and then you chain two. Turn your work around and you're ready to begin again. And that's it guys, that's all there's really to this. So the blanket itself is really incredibly easy to crochet. The complicated part is just the chart. But if you're paying attention to your numbers, you're gonna be just fine. So this is like color by the numbers, only crochet by the numbers. So just make sure you jot down all those numbers I gave you at the beginning of the row, or at the beginning of the video, sorry, which are the stitches that you have in between the different parts of the images. So like between the bow tie that we had the 16, or between the M or all of that. Jot those down, it will make your life easier. Don't forget to use these little numbers under each image. Look, that tells you right there, that's a 14. That tells you you are on row 14, and that way you don't have to follow the row all the way along to the side to find where you're at. You can just look at that one and know you're on row 14. So if you have any other suggestions too for things that would make these charts easier to read, 
let me know in the comments. Um, that way I can do that for future charts. But follow along with the numbers, just pay attention, count them if you need to, print it a few times if you need to, especially if you buy um, the chart, you can print it as many times as you want, it's yours to keep. So you'll get the online version and you also have the PDF version. So you'll always have the most up-to-date pattern forever. So I have no intentions of taking these patterns down. So you'll have them forever. Um, but if you have any questions on how to read the chart, just let me know. Anyway, that's how you read and complete the chart. Now, the next part that we need to go over is going to be putting um, the last, the finishing touches on this blanket. So you've already read your chart. You're at the top of the arrow, which is what I have right up here. So you've finished, you've done all 100 rows of the chart, and now you have 34 rows to complete after that. You don't need to use any more white up here. So what I would recommend you do is once you complete the arrow, so this very last stitch of arrow that you have, you won't need the white anymore, so just cut the yarn. So leave a nice long tail end of yarn. So leave something nice and long, kind of like this. And then just cut it. And you won't have to worry about carrying yarn throughout the rest of your work. So just leave a nice long tail end. We will weave it in at the end of this video. I'll show you how. And then all you have to do now is complete 34 rows in color one. Okay, so let's pretend we're on the last stitch of the blanket. This is the very last half double crochet. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna make your last half double crochet. So let me zoom in. So here we go. And you are done. Now what you need to do is a chain one, tighten that up, leave a long tail end of yarn and cut it. That's it. You're gonna remove your hook and you're gonna pull the thread out. Since you've cut it, it will eventually, you'll get to the end of it and you'll have a light, nice, long tail end like this one. You're going to need to weave this in. So if you don't know how to weave it in, this is the method I use at least, and it seems to work for me just fine. You're going to need a yarn or tapestry needle. Whichever one fits your yarn will work just fine. So just thread that through, and you're going to grab your crochet work, and you're going to run your stitches parallel to your work. So just stitch down. So I'm gonna stitch in the shape of a square. Pick a shape, any shape you want to. So I'm just going to stitch down. Again, run parallel to your work. Don't go through your work, so you're not sewing it in. You're not gonna go right through, right across like that. That's not right. Parallel. So you are hiding your yarn. So make your first stitch, and then I'm just gonna stitch, like I said, in the shape of a square. So I'm gonna make a really small stitch, pull through, and now I'm gonna switch directions. So now I'm gonna go left to right. So I'll turn my work around, here we go. And then give it a small stitch right there. And then I'm gonna switch directions again. So I'm gonna stitch from the bottom towards the top. Let's see, these are all small stitches and I'm not going through the work. I'm just really light stitches, just trying to hide everything. There we go and now I'll just go from right to left. Now you don't have to sew this in a square, it's just the easiest for me. I just make a square pattern every time I weave in my ends. Um, you can just switch directions every stitch. It doesn't matter. Um, but you stitch a few of these, just go around and around until you run out of yarn. And then this will not only help hide the tail end of yarn, but it also makes it very difficult for your work to unravel. Especially once you throw your, your work into the machine when you have to wash it, it makes it a lot easier to keep your work from unraveling. So I found that it works a lot easier than just making a knot. So anyway, I'm going to have this tail end left. So I'm just going to do one long stitch at the very end. So this is my last stitch. Go to the very end, one long stitch, and then I'm going to pull on my yarn, cut the thread, and then just tug on my work to hide that tail end. And that's it. That's how I um, hide all my yarn. So that's how you weave in ends. You're going to have a total of four ends you need to weave in at least at this point, because once you do your border, you'll have two more ends to weave in. So you'll have two tail ends in white from when you introduce the white thread, and then two in mint or whatever color you chose. So weave in all of those, and then you can start on your border. So now for the border, I'm not gonna show you how you're gonna do it on this tutorial, because I posted a video on how to do four 
different borders. So the one I used was the half double crochet border because that's the stitch I used for the blanket. I didn't want the look to change. So I did a half double crochet border. I'll leave the link up here, up at the top, for that video tutorial. I'll also post it in the description box below. So in that tutorial, I show you how to do four different blanket borders. And they're really easy, beginner-friendly blanket borders. So this one, I did five rows in white. You can make it as big as you want. This is two inches wide, so it's about five centimeters. So you can make it bigger if you want to. You do have enough yarn. You're going to use about half a skein if you're going to make a small border like mine. So you will still have about half a skein and you can make it wider. And there you go, folks. That's how I crocheted the Mr. and Mrs. Afghan. So be sure to check out the blog if you want to get the chart for this pattern. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. That way, if anybody else has that question, we can answer it and we can just help each other out while we're crocheting this together. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? I post videos every Thursday, guys. It's free crochet patterns. Subscribe. Go check out the blog. I do have tons of free patterns on there for blankets, for scarves, hats, all kinds of stuff. Go check that out. The link is in the description box below and all the patterns are free. If you want to see more of my work, follow me on Instagram. I did put the link here in the, on the screen so you can follow me there. Um, I do post stuff a couple of times a week so you'll be able to see what I'm working on now as well as preview what we're going to be working on here on YouTube. Don't forget to share and like the video if you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all again next Thursday.